Good morning. We are here in lovely Colorado. The sun is shining. We've got permission to come into a thrift store. It's actually run by a library. And we're gonna be in here about a half hour before it opens to the public. The ladies here were very kind and let us come in and show you what we look for when we walk into a thrift store. And I first wanna talk through a little bit of etiquette. When you walk in there, remember that you're a guest. They're happy to sell you the books. Again, some people don't like that you're selling online, but for the most part, they're a bookstore. They're trying to sell books. They're trying to get them out in the community. And if we can buy the books, they're gonna be pretty happy as a result. So treat everybody kindly, look for other scouters and be friendly to them as well. And if anybody's in there trying to buy books, make sure you're courteous and you stay out of their way. And we, if someone is right next to me looking at books, I'll say, hey, if you see anything you like, you can have first dibs. Again, I'm a reseller. I'm just trying to make money. If someone's actually gonna read the book, then I'd rather it go to them. So that's a little bit of the etiquette. Also, remember the Boy Scout rule. Make sure you leave the place better than you found it. So you don't want people going, oh, I don't like book resellers. I don't like book scouts. They always trash the place. They're rude. Make sure that you're kind, and that'll set the stage for you to keep coming back time and time again. Uh, as it comes to strategy, we'll walk you through some of the things we look for, and uh, come on into the store. All right, we're here in the store, and uh, when you walk into the store again, always be kind to everybody that you see. Again, we're here a little bit before hours, so there's not the people are in the background, and they were very kind to let us in. So what you want to do is get a quick lay of the land as you set your strategy. Most of the store, most times they're going to be organized. So we've got fiction over here, we've got nonfiction over here, and we're going to spend most of our time in nonfiction. That's where you're going to find the best books to resell. There certainly are some books in fiction, um, but if you are short on time, you're going to want to start in nonfiction. So come on around the corner. Again, before you come in the store, you want to make sure that you're all set up. I've got my scanner charged, it's connected. I made sure it connected at home, and I do have a scanner sheet in the car. If for whatever reason I lose connection and need to reset it, I've got that with me. Don't ever leave home without it. If my phone is fully charged, we're ready to go. So come around here. Again, you're gonna see that things are categorized. We've got humor here. And uh, as you're setting the strategy, you wanna get a feel for where nonfiction is. We also wanna understand what the pricing is. In this case, there's no stickers on it. And this store actually puts the pricing, if you wanna look right here, they'll put the pricing up in the corner. So this is a dollar. Most stuff here is gonna be 80 cents to two bucks. You just wanna get a feel for that. If you're paying $5 a book, and you're gonna certainly have a different strategy. You're gonna buy fewer books than if you're paying a dollar or 50 cents. So um, come on over here. Where I like to start typically is textbooks. And I, I've been in here before. We know that there's a, a decent number of textbooks down here. And the reason I start with textbooks is it's gonna set the stage. If I find good books in the textbook region, that lets me know that it, no one's been in here or no one's really <laughs> gone through this stuff really recently. So I always start there. That's, that's where I have my best chance of finding good stuff and most everybody else is gonna start there too. So what I'm trying to do is see, has someone been in here before? If they have, I'm probably not gonna find much and that lets me know, all right, I need to think outside the box a little bit. If I find a lot of good stuff in the textbook section, that lets me know this is probably gonna be a gold mine and I need to set, settle in because I'm gonna be here for a while. Um, you always wanna try and grab a bin or something to, to collect things or you can stack them up on the grounds and again, just settle in. Some things to look for, again, most books are gonna have barcodes. So if you can pull these out and see them, that's what you're gonna try and hit with your scanner. Anytime something's covered up like this, you can come on in closer. Anytime the barcode's covered up, this is actually good because it means that someone probably hasn't typed this in because they'd either have to peel the sticker back or you gotta look on the back of the front page, of the title page rather, and pull up the ISBN. So if you can do some type-ins, especially if someone's been here before, that's a really good way to set yourself apart. The other thing you can do is go where people don't want to go. So a lot of people don't want to get down and go to the bottom shelves. And if you can do that, that's going to set you apart. And then also top shelves. It's harder to reach. People don't like to go there. So those are the things you're going to do if you think that someone's been in here before and that's what you're looking for. Okay, so after we've looked at textbooks, the question is where do we go next? And remember, if we haven't found a lot of good stuff, we're going to go where other people haven't. We're going to do type-ins. We're going to do the extra work. We're going to go on the bottom shelf, top shelf, etc. And we may go off the beaten path. But I'm going to look at the next several categories that are going to be good. One thing I do want to point out is look at the spines. Anything that says reference may be good because that's from a library. It's something that's pulled out. And this stuff usually isn't for sale that often. The other thing to look for is used stickers. And you can see these on the spines. And this is usually from a textbook store. This is, a, I think, a thrift book st uh, sticker. So that's been sold before. Usually that's cheaper stuff. But anything, time you see a textbook sticker, there's another one over here. Again, this is letting you know that this is a textbook. You should definitely hit it. Um, also, you're looking for good publishers like Oxford. Anything that's going to be kind of technical, you want to be looking for that. Anything that says like second edition or even Cambridge. Again, the more technical, the better. 
from there, again, we got a lot of, uh, we've got some adventure books. Most of this is fiction, you know, Dan Brown. So we're not really going to be looking in these sections. Again, there, there are books you can find, but if you're short on time, that's not where you want to spend it. And again, uh, mass market paperback in general. There are some good stuff. If there's box sets, for sure, go for it. But most of the time, you don't want to spend your time here. So come on around the corner again. So math, as far as looking for subjects, again, we're looking for used barcodes. Of course, this is, looks like a really old book, so probably not worth it. Computer stuff can be worth it, but it goes out of date really quickly. So math, architecture, business is good. Probably my favorite category is going to be Bible and religion, especially commentary. Um, a lot of this stuff retains its value. It doesn't change very often. You can get some books that are popular, and sometimes they can be worth some money as well. It just depends on you know where the market is at the time. So again, let's just walk through the setup and uh, let's dive into textbooks like we said to start with. All right, again, we're gonna start with textbooks, make yourself comfortable. I've got my Bluetooth scanner connected with Velcro to the back of my phone, and I've got Scout IQ. Now this area, because we're inside, we're in kind of a strip mall, actually doesn't have hardly any cell reception. So having a database is really important in this situation, because if you were relying on live lookups, you're probably not gonna get data very often. Um, so again, I try and operate with one hand. I'm gonna pull the books out with the other hand, scan a barcode, and wait for it to tell me the result. You can look at the data and try and see if it's something you would buy, or you can trust the triggers and just look for the accept or reject. Now the first book here doesn't have a barcode, and again, it looks older to me, cycles of essential elements, it's probably outdated. If you have time, these are really good things to type in because most people probably have ignored these. But if you're short on time, just work your way through the barcodes. And again, if you got it set up decently well, one hand pulls the book out, the other hand is scanning, and again, if it's looking up something live, you can see that we don't have great connection. So the database is really important here. And we just keep going through. So this is a $7 profit. It has a rank of 3.7 million and an e-score of zero. So the app is saying to reject it. Again, if you could pick it up really cheap and you don't mind sitting, that's fine. But this hasn't sold in six months, so you probably don't want to buy it. Again, you want to look at condition. There is some water damage here. I tend to stay away from those. So even, even though it's a type in, I'm probably not going to bother. Um, if it's an expensive book, then I may do it. Again, a lot of books have type ins. So it's not hard, you can pull up your app and simply type it in, and most people aren't gonna do that. But if time is tight, that may not be the best use of your time. So again, we're working our way through, see if we find anything decent. And again, the faster you can go, the better. Now, should you scan every single book? If you have time, yeah, the answer is yes and no, it depends. If you're just learning, it's definitely worth trying to get in there and scan every single book. It's very quick to get through there and do that. Again, if time is tight, maybe you don't have time to do that, you might want to try and pick and choose. But I found when I'm just guessing and using my eyeballs, I'm okay at it. I'm not great. There's a lot of books that don't look good that actually are. And there's a lot of books that look good that aren't. So again, we can cheat. We can see the data first and know if it's something that's worth buying or if we should pass on it. So here's a book that is um, E-score of 27, it's selling a lot. We can sell it for 11 bucks after, after fees, it'd be 240. The app saying reject and the book's actually two bucks. So I like to set the buy cost to zero. I don't like to change it because the buy prices change. I'm not gonna spend two to make 240 because that's only 40 cents a profit. So that's not something I'm gonna do. So we're gonna put it back and keep working our way through. And again, there's a type in and if you have time, you should definitely be typing those in. Otherwise, look for barcodes and just work your way through. So I haven't really given it a fair shot. Let me try and get through a few qu more quickly here. There's a 250 profit, but I probably got to pay a buck or two, so it's not worth it. I type in, another type in. So again, you get the feeling that you can work your way through quickly as you go. All right, here we go. So algebra and trigonometry, I can sell it for 21 bucks. E score is 32, ranks 148, it's great. I'll make nine bucks, even though it's a heavy book, I'll make nine bucks after fees, and the cost is two bucks. And I think education is 50% off today, so I'm only gonna pay a dollar, which is great. So I just spent a dollar, I'll make eight bucks relatively quickly. That's a great find. So this could have just been put out 
we don't know yet, or this means textbooks haven't been picked over. And again, as we set the stage, we're looking at a 3 to 5% hit rate, sometimes a little lower. So if I scan 100 books, I'm probably going to pull 3 to 4 out of it. And so I've already found one after scanning about 20. And so we'll keep working our way through. And that's what it is. Just set, set yourself into a rhythm and do what you can to keep buying. Alright, so we were inside for about 30 minutes. We actually ran into two other people using Scout IQ. So Stephanie and Cole, hello. Thanks for using our uh, software. Um, so again, we got a little bit of a head start. That's not normally going to happen. As soon as uh, the doors opened up, there was probably seven or eight people and three of them were also scanning. So we stayed for about a half hour and Matthew and I both went through and we actually had a pretty good haul. This is not all the time that common, but we got about 45 bucks. And what'd you pay? 50 bucks? 55 bucks? 52. So just over a dollar a book and uh, we'll actually show the profits on this and we're going to walk you through how to list these as well but i'm going to show the the my phone screen rather than trying to show it here i'm going to show it on the on the screen up there as well so matthew should be able to overlay that and i want to walk through just some of the books we found and talk you through why we bought it or didn't buy it again i can't emphasize this enough be very kind when you're in the stores be nice to people you're going to meet some other really cool sellers as well and don't just treat them as competition you can learn from them they can learn from you vice versa um, let me walk you through, and again, also don't just look at the accept reject, because a lot of times it's going to be right on the edge of a trigger. Let's say you needed 250 of profit and it's 245. You might be able to make that eyeball decision to say, hey, I'd actually want to buy this book instead. So let me scan some of the books and just show you what we came up with. Here's an example of that. This one says to reject, it's like Kingdom Come. We can get 11 bucks for it, and after fees, it's a $4 book. The e-score is 21, so this has sold at least 21 days in the last six months, so it's doing well. It sells a couple times a month, and uh, this particular book was a dollar. So to spend a dollar, make four, we might have to sit on it for two, three weeks, but that's pretty reasonable and you know, pretty confident we can get 10, 11 bucks for it. So that's a book, even though it says to reject, I'm gonna buy it. Let's look at some of the other books we've got. Here's one where it tells us we can price at $22. You'll notice it didn't pick the lowest prime price in this case because we actually wanna be second or third in line depending on the triggers. With an e-score of 48, this is selling enough that we're fine waiting a little bit for this one to sell. So rather than pricing at the $21 price point, we're gonna go a little bit higher and uh, probably in the $22, $23 range. So we'll make 11 bucks. This book costs 90 cents. So 90 cents into 11 bucks and that's after Amazon's fees. Look at some more books here. This one's awesome. It's picking Amazon's price and it's actually gonna pick 10% less than Amazon so we don't compete with them. We're gonna price this at 25 minus 10%, so it's gonna be 22.50. And you can see that the payout's gonna be 13.91, which is great. And this book cost us 60 cents. So 60 cents into $14. And again, these books, you can find them not all day long, but you know when you make a $10 bill, and even if we priced at the lowest merchant fulfilled price, it's gonna be in the $22, $23 range. This is a great book. There's not even a prime bump. It's just, it's the same whether it's merchant fulfilled or prime. Here's a book. The e-score is over 151. It's selling all the time. The rank is really, really good. Amazon's on it for 11 bucks. We can list it for about 950. And after fees, we're gonna make $3. This one cost us 60 cents. So it's a paperback book, 60 cents into three bucks. You know, a quick 250 in profit, and as long as you can get in, you're already there, you can buy the book. It's going to be pretty, pretty quick. Here's another book The Merchant Fulfilled and the Prime Match are the lowest prices. So, this is a $21 book, and it costs 40 cents to make $11 profit. Here is again, we're looking at Amazon's price because it's we're going to price under that. Everybody else is getting too close to Amazon, so we're going to stay 10% away. We're spent. 
three dollars on that one but we're gonna make about seven so it's about four dollars of profit or more than 100 percent return and that should be a quick sale because the rank is 186 it's really really good this one we're gonna make 350 we spent a dollar 60 so again we're about doubling the money make about two dollars of profit here we're gonna make about 580 and we spent 80 cents and let's show you two more so this one again we're pricing against amazon we're gonna make about 450 of profit cost us a dollar 60 so we're gonna triple our money make about three dollars of profit just for handling a book and last but not least this one we can make about ten dollars of profit and it cost us 80 cents so again that's those are just some of the highlights in there and again we're trying to make two three dollars a book if we spend about a dollar a book we're going to triple or quadruple our money spent 50 bucks we'll probably after fees and everything profit somewhere in the two to 250 dollar range and we'll get the real numbers i'm just guess, guesstimating based on what we saw but we'll actually share the real numbers through the source again that's about 30 35 minutes of sourcing we're going to run over and show you one more thrift store and just give you one more example all right we're in a different thrift store environment this time and this one is set up a little bit differently so come on in and we'll show you again we've kind of got it set up where we're looking at nonfiction. we're looking at the, uh, the educational stuff as well again we can spend time in fiction but if your time is limited make sure you're spending it on nonfiction where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck so come on in again part of scoping it out is realizing what the pricing is these are a little more expensive and this is a chain here in denver uh, you see 3.99 you'll see different colors so the colors correlate to which week they came on the shelves, and I think there's five, four, six, something like that. There's you know five or six colors that are going to be rotated through. And what they do then is that ensures that they actually throw stuff off the shelves after it gets to four to six weeks old. If it hasn't sold, what they do is they discount it the last the last week. So this week, um, white stickers are half off. So anything that's white is going to be half of that. So a buck seventy-five instead of three fifty. Those are good ones to look for. And then we did ask when we came in, the new color of the week is pink. So if you are really limited on time, you just want to simply scroll through. We've got a bunch of oranges here. You want to find a pink section, which is probably all brand new, and scan those because that's stuff that no one's probably gotten to yet. So again, if you understand the system, how it works, it's going to help you make the best decisions as you get into it. All right, so we just walked out of the ARC thrift store. If you're in Denver, you'll be familiar with that chain. We got 13 bucks, so not as many as at the other outlet store. But we ended up picking up 13 books, spent $33. So a couple things. One, you know, we could have spent longer. We still didn't get through all the books there. We could go back to the first thrift store. We only spent a half hour and we probably only got through about 20% of the nonfiction section. But if you if you do find a good source like this where you're walking out with 40 or 50 books after a half hour, you probably want to settle in and plan to be there for a while and forget about the rest of your day. If you can walk out with 100 books in one source, which is very possible, maybe even 150, you should probably just settle in and do that. The ARC, again, they're a little more expensive. We paid almost $3 a book. And we'll show you what the actual numbers look like. We're probably gonna double, if not triple our money. It's nothing sexy, it's nothing glamorous. But again, another 20 minutes scouting, probably walk out with 50 bucks of profit. So we'll, we'll kind of, again, show you what that looks like. Um, and again, just because the source isn't good, we walked away with 13 books here, that's, that's probably average, that, that's okay. Just because it's not great, that's all right. You wanna go back there again later. This same store, I've been in here and picked up 100 books at a given time. Other times I've come in and pretty much struck out and walked out with two or three. So it just depends on the day, depends on what's out there, depends on who's been there and how good that they picked it over or not. And so again, make sure you set up a rotation, go back to the sources fairly often, and just figure out which ones are your sources. And uh, that's it. One, one last thing, don't forget to save your receipt. You're going to want to have that for tax purposes and be able to prove what you actually spent on inventory. So you can either keep the paper copy or snap a photo of it. I like to use Google Drive and just upload it as a PDF. It's actually searchable later, and I've got a receipts folder. I just literally snap a picture of every receipt, throw it in there. I use a separate credit card, or if I do use cash, I try to avoid that. But I use a separate credit card for tracking that, and it keeps things really clean from an accounting standpoint. So that's sourcing. That's two sources. Again, we've probably got, what we say, 13 and 45, so 58, 60 books, give or take. It's a pretty good morning. We've only been out for just over an hour at this point, including driving. We're gonna go back home. We're going to show you how to get these listed. Come on.